Welcome to Mr. V Teaching Math. In this session, we are going to be examining the relationship between volume and capacity. These are very closely related. Volume is the measurement of how much space something takes up, while capacity is the measurement of how much something holds, which are almost the same thing. However, when we are looking at the metric conversions between the volume and the capacity units, there are some differences. And if anyone out there has a great way to remember this, I'd be happy to hear it in your comments. One centimeter cubed will equal one milliliter. One decimeter cubed will equal one liter. One meter cubed will equal one kiloliter. Or in other terms, if I have seven centimeters cubed, I have seven milliliters. That conversion is true simply following any of the arrows. One way that I find somewhat useful in helping me remember this is if we remember our conversions from earlier, when converting within volume, if I take 1.2 here and I convert from here, remember that I must move the decimal three spaces. This becomes 0, decimal 0, 0, 1, 2. Over here, there is no exponent. I will move the decimal only a single space. If this is 1.2, as my arrow indicates, that these are equal, and I only move the decimal one space each time, you will see that these match. I find that somewhat useful in helping remember this connection. Unfortunately, I do not have any other easy ways to memorize or remember this connection. And that is a review of how volume and capacity are connected. Welcome to Mr. V Teaching Math. In this session, we will be looking at how volume and capacity are connected to mass in the metric conversion system. While volume and capacity connect in a relatively simple fashion and is always true, the connection to mass is not. In fact, the connection to mass only occurs when you are dealing with water, which is at 4 degrees Celsius. If you use a substance other than water, of course the amount of mass in a given capacity or volume will change. If the temperature changes, that object will either contract or expand, again changing the capacity and volume. So in reality, I am not certain how useful this connection really is. It does exist, and it's something that we are required to teach. However, it is nowhere near as valuable as knowing the connection between these two sections. The connection is somewhat similar as the connection between volume and capacity. One milliliter of water at four degrees Celsius will weigh one gram. Can you figure out where the next arrow is going to go? If the decimal moves three spaces to get up to liters. It must also move three spaces here. Therefore, one liter of water will weigh one kilogram. And one kiloliter of water will weigh one metric ton. Note the spelling, ton, N-N-E. If you spell it in this fashion, you are referring to an imperial ton, which is completely different. So in the same fashion as our conversions from this part of the chart, if we have one milliliter here, we will have one gram. If we had 1,200 liters of water at 4 degrees Celsius, we would have 
200 kilograms of water at 4 degrees Celsius. And that is how volume, capacity, and mass are connected in the metric system.